blessed day to everyone. I am Nani Grispi Sulayo together with Mr. Shanvi Yamosa and Ms. Rico May Tanod Tanod. And today we will talk about global demography. Our learning objectives are first, know the relationship between population and economic welfare, identify the uh, effects of aging and overpopulation, and of course, uh, differentiate between contrasting positions over reproductive health. Okay, since we are talking about global demography, it is necessary na, syempre, alamin muna natin kung ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng demography. The word demography came from ancient Greek word demo, which means people, and graphy, uh, which means writing or description or measurement. So, meaning to say, demography is the statistical or quantitative study of human population, especially about uh, births or the fertility rate, aging deaths, and migration. Migration means movement of individuals, households, and groups between residences or residential locations. And then, when we talk about births or the fertility rate, this is the average number of children that would be born to a woman over her lifetime. And mortality rate, on the other, uh, on the other hand, uh, it is the average number of deaths in a particular population and then the aging or population aging. This refers to the changes in the age composition of a population such, uh, such that there is an increase in the proportion of the person. So, why do we need to study demography? First, is because it is useful for governments and private businesses as a means of analyzing and predicting social, cultural, and economic trends related to population. And in this unit, we will talk about the interconnectedness among the population, migration, and also environmental sustainability. The family, which is the basic unit of the society. Okay, we have here uh, rur uh, rural and urbanized communities or families. So rural communities prefer to have more children because some of them, especially yung mga may sakahan, they think na kapag mas marami ang anak, mas marami silang makakatulong sa pagsasaka. Pero hindi lang sa rural communities yung ganun, but also on some part of urbanized na urbanized communities na uh, lugar kung saan kadalasan sa mga uh, poor districts, iniisip nila na kapag madami ang anak, madami rin silang makatulong sa small business na meron sila. The more the merrier ika nga nila. And urbanized educated and professional families with two incomes they desire to just have one or two children because of their uh, commitments on their jobs that's why they don't have enough uh, enough time kung magkakaroon pa sila syempre ng mas maraming anak okay take note class that this differing versions of family life determine the economic and social policies that countries crop regarding their respective populations Countries in the less uh, developed regions of the world that rely on agriculture tend to maintain high levels of population growth. Urban populations have grown but not necessarily because families are having more children. It is rather the combination of the natural outcome of significant migration to the cities by people seeking work in the more modern sectors of society. International migration also plays a part. Today, 191 million people live in countries other than their own. And the United Nations projects that over 2.2 million will move from the developing world to the first world countries. Many countries welcome immigrants because they balance the weakening effects of an aging population. Uh, syempre, uh, we welcome sila ng uh, uh, yung mga ibang Ibat ibang bansa, uh, they are open to immigrants because, syempre, uh, meron ding disadvantages kapag ka sobrang onti naman ng population pagdating sa, uh, meron kakaroon ng conflict pagdating sa manpower. This is the most accepting countries for immigrants 2022 from internations.org. 
Nangunguna ang Canada, followed by Iceland, and then New Zealand, sumunod ang Australia, and so on and so forth. The perils of overpopulation. Okay, when we say perils, it simply means dangers. So, it means the dangers of overpopulation. Okay, of course, the economic factors that contribute to the immigration, including the desire to obtain higher wages, have better jobs opportunities, and gain education in urban places. However, uh, development planners see urbanization and industrialization as indicators of a developing society, but disagree on the role of population growth or decline in modernization. This lengthy discussion brings back uh, ideas of British scholar Thomas Malthus, who warned in his 1978 an essay on the principle of population. Sabi niya roon na magkakaroon raw ng food shortage dahil sa patuloy na pagdami ng populasyon. And it was revived in the late 1960s uh, when American biologist Paul R. Ehrlich and his wife Anne wrote The Population Bomb, which argued that overpopulation in the 1970s and in 19 80s will bring about global environmental disasters that would lead to food shortage and mass starvation. Okay, next slide. By limiting the population, vital resources could be used for economic progress and not be diverted and wasted to feeding more mouths. So this argument became the basis for each government of the country to create a population control programs across the world. So, for example, the Philippines, China, and India, they sought to lower birth rate on the belief that the expansion of family members would lead to a crisis in resources, which in return may result in widespread poverty, mass hunger, and political stability. And in 1958, the American Policy Journal Foreign Affairs had already advocated uh, contraception and sterilization as the practical solutions to global, econo uh, global economic, social, and political problems. Advocates of population control contend for universal access to reproductive technologies such as condoms, pills, abortion, and vasectomy. And more importantly, giving women the right to choose whether to have children or not. Politics determined these birth control programs. Uh, developed countries justified their support for population control in developing countries by depicting the latter as conservative societies. So, even na uh, nakita ng government yung importansya ng pagkakaroon ng birth control sa bawat countries, uh, of course, there are still many things to consider. Population experts blame the irresponsible fecundity of Egyptians for that nation's run-on population growth. Next is the Iranian peasants naturally begin now the tendencies for the same rise in population. Muslims as hypersexual and hyperfecund and hence a drain on resources. Vietnam and, Vietnam and Mexico also conducted coercive mass sterilization. And then, forced sterilization of 20 million violators of the Chinese government's one-child policy. In China, uh, you know what, mas marami ang bilang ng mga lalaki kaysa sa mga babae because they preferred to have a son uh, than to have a daughter. So, ang tendency nito ay mas mataas yung abortion rate pagdating sa female fetuses or babies. And in one-child policy, Ah, sa madaling salita, ito ay one birth policy, kumbaga. Kumbaga, isang beses lang dapat mga anak yung babae sa kanila. Sa mga nakaviolate naman ng policy na ito, um, magkakaroon ng multa or mawawala ng trabaho. And ang mas worse pa rito is kailangan nilang ipa-abort yung baby nila. At sa mga nakasunod naman sa policy, they will have some incentives like financial perks, opportunities, and etc. Okay, next slide. This is the top 
10 most populous countries in the world 2022 according to Topper's Bulletin. China is the most crowded country in a uh, country with about 1.4 billion citizens. Second is India and third is the US. In China, over 60% of its residents live in urban centers, a, ten a tendency that has seen the part of city dwellers double over the earlier 25 years. The estimated world population is to be 7.8 billion as of 2022. It's the economy, not the babies. Okay, this part will be discussed by Ms. Rika May Tanod Tanod. It's the economy, not the babies. Ayon kay Betsy Hartman, ang solusyon sa problema ay hindi nakasalalay sa pagkontrol sa populasyon o sa pagdami ng populasyon, kundi sa pagpapabuti ng pamantayan ng pamumuhay, kalagayan ng kababaihan at ang mga kalidad ng serbisyo sa pagpaplano ng pamilya. Neo-Maltusianism It is the view that the rate of increase of a population should be controlled. Ayon sa Neo-Maltusian, ang pagdami ng populasyon ay pwede daw makontrol. Halimbawa na lamang sa paggamit ng mga contraception like condom and pills. Um, sa paggamit daw nito ay makokontrol ang pagdami ng populasyon or ng tao. Ngunit itong si Betsy Hartman ay hindi sumangayon sa Neo-Maltusian. A growth population can generate economic growth. The birth of more people equates to a greater number of parents investing in their youth. Ang pagsilang na mas maraming tao ay katumbas ng mas malaking bilang ng mga magulang na namumuhunan sa kanilang kabataan o kanilang mga anak. Halimbawa na lamang sa pagtatanim. Kapag may malaking espasyo ng pagtataniman, mas maraming matatanim at maaani. Dahil hindi lang ikaw ang magtatanim, kundi ang pwede ding tumulong sa iyo yung mga anak mo sa pagtatanim. Sa gayon, malaki yung chance na marami kang matanim, maani at pwede mo itong pagkakitaan. Dito din papasok ang Maltusian Theory. Dito ay natakot na mas dumami ang tao kaysa sa supply ng mga pagkain. Dahil kapag mas dumami ang um, mga tao, um, pwedeng magkaroon ng taggutom, um, magkagulo ang mga tao, at magkaroon ng mga sakit ang mga tao dahil wala na silang sapat na kinakain o napagkukuha na ng pagkain. Ngunit ang takot na ito, ang Maltesian Theory ay hindi na... Um, natuloy or um, nagpatuloy dahil nagkaroon ng Green Revolution. Green Revolution was a period from the 1940s to the late 1960s when the production of crops increased drastically as a result of new technological advances such as mechanical equipment, new farming techniques, and chemical fertilizer. So dito nga ay hindi na natuloy yung um, tinatawag na Maltusian Theory or yung kinakatakutan nila na, mas, na baka mas dumami yung Um, bilang ng mga tao kaysa sa mga food supply. Dahil dito sa Green Revolution, nagkaroon na ng mga, mga bagong kagamitan upang mas, ma mas mapanatili at mapadali ang pagproduce ng mga pagkain o food supply. Dahil dito, mas nadaragdagan ng mga tao sa populasyon dahil pag mas marami ang tao, mas marami yung nai-invest. Next one is Women and Reproductive Rights. The right to reproductive choice means that women have a right to choose whether or not to carry or terminate an unwanted pregnancy and the right to choose their preferred method of family planning and contraception. Dito ay may karapatan ang mga kababaihan na pumili um, kung ipagpapatuloy pa ba nila or hindi na ang kanilang pagbubuntis. May karapatan din ang mga kababaihan na uh, na paraan ng pagpaplano ng pamilya. Ngunit dito sa Pilipinas, we already have the Republic Act number no. 10354 or the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Act of 2012 known as RH Law. Reproductive rights refers to the composite of human rights that address matters of sexual and reproductive health. Ito ay karapatan sa RH. Bahagi din ito ng reproductive rights. Ito ay karapatan ng mga tao, lalong-lalo na ang mga kababaihan. Ito ay mga serbisyo at mga supply upang maging malusog. Halimbawa na lamang kapag um, sa pagbubuntis, pang panganganak at pagpapasuso ng sanggol. What is abortion? 
Abortion is when a pregnancy is ended so that it doesn't result in the birth of a child. Sometimes it is called termination of pregnancy. Ito daw ay ang pagpapalaglag, pagpapaagas, o ito ay ang sinasadyang pagtatanggal ng fetus sa loob ng sinapupunan ng babae na nagsasanhi ng kamatayan. So, nasa nagdadalang ng tao yan kung ipagpapatuloy niya pa or hindi na ang kanyang ang pagbubuntis. But here in the Philippines, abortion is illegal. Again, here in the Philippines, abortion is illegal. So, higit sa isang daang mga bansa na um, legal sa kanila yung um, pagpapa-abort or abortion dahil um, may naging rason sila um, may naging rason sila upang um, iliga, um, maging legal yung abortion sa kanilang bansa upang maligtas ang buhay ng isang babae. So, ayun yung rason nila. We have two types of abortion, medical and surgical. Medical abortion is, um, ito ay ginagamitan ng mga gamot upang wakasan na ang pagbubuntis. So, may tinitake kang mga medicine or gamot para um, hindi, na, um, hindi na matuloy ang iyong pagbubuntis. So, surgical abortion, ito ay isang paraan na sa isang hindi gustong pagbubuntis. Ito ay ang pag-alis ng fetus sa, at inunan sa sinapupunan ng um, ina. So, dito sa surgical abortion is... Um, Um, operation siya, nagiging operation siya. And these are the top 10 countries with the highest abortion rates. We have Russia, Vietnam, Kazakhstan, Estonia, Belarus, Romania, Ukraine, Latvia, Cuba, and China. And that's all. Thank you for listening.